Hi friends, it's Monica and let's review House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Maas. So this one is book three in the Crescent City series and I am assuming it's the last book in this series by Sarah J Maas. To begin, just right off, I ended up rating this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And for being one of my most anticipated books of 2024, this is an okay reading for me. I'm going to be diving into my non-spoiler thoughts and my spoiler thoughts. Everything's timestamped, so if you want to skip ahead, you're free to do so. A quick summary for those who don't know much about this series. So we're following Bryce Quinlan, who is a half a half human, who is living in an urban fantastical city that is full to the brim with angels, merfolk, humans, witches, shifters, and many other creatures. Bryce, in book one, she is enjoying her 20s and unexpectedly tragedy strikes. Then she was roped into solving a case that she does not want to be involved in, but she has to be. And by her side is Hunt Athelar, an angel, and he is her partner in crime in this case, as well as her bodyguard. In book three, we continue to see our characters in their lives on Midgard and how they are fighting off their ultimate enemies. Going straight to what I did think of this book with no spoilers. My first assumption going into this book is that it is the last book in the series and with that in mind it can be really difficult to wrap up all those storylines that has been building up over the whole trilogy. Also pay off everything and also have like all the characters and relationships come together in the end. But to be honest, this book didn't really do too well on all of those fronts. The plot was driving everything forward and it felt like our characters didn't have much of emotional growth and they didn't get as much page time as I would have liked with seeing their emotional growth within themselves and with their relationships with others. Especially after that in House of Sky and Breath, book two, I really went into House of Flame and Shadow with a lot of expectations and the possibilities that could happen. I was expecting a lot more wow moments but in hindsight I understand why we didn't get those moments because this is Bryce's book and her friend's book. So I think I was reading up too much fan theories and possibilities but it was really fun to go into like crackpot theories and all that. In the first part of this book, we see our characters being very sad and a lot of pain and having a lot of quick history lessons. This is where Sarah J Maas lost me a little bit because with all those quick history lessons, it ended up being infodumps. There is many infodumps at many points in this book and if it was just one, I could be like, okay, that's fine, but there were quite a bit. <laughs> And it ended up feeling a little bit too easy and a little bit too clean of having resolutions for all of our supposedly huge problems that is impossible to solve. Also the high stakes that were going to be there, it wasn't there. Although this book did deliver in those great action cinematic sequences that I really love how Sarah writes and she also really does bring out the emotional points in her characters very very well. Another thing that was bothering me during this book was the writing. It just started to feel very very formulaic and I wanted to see a little bit more originality in Sarah's writing as well as more growth in her writing but again in hindsight looking at how popular her books are and how this formulaic writing works for her. It's like don't change something that works or that isn't broken. I just wanted to see more care or more time dedicated to elevating her writing since it is an adult fantasy and with adult fantasy I would be thinking okay the writing's gonna be a little bit better. This series does fall into fantasy romance although there aren't as many romantic scenes in this book except for here and there. Moving on to the characters and my thoughts of them. Rice, our protagonist, she does come across as a little bit too sassy, being the chosen one and also having Elaine-esque behaviors of withholding plans from her friends and then at the last moment she has this brilliant plan that saves everyone. <laughs> from the danger. I enjoyed a very specific pairing that I will get into the spoiler section, but I did really love how our characters did come together when they got together as a huge group, fighting alongside each other as well as just hanging out with each other and decompressing from everything that's going on. In summary, this book has many unexpected twists, 
too many POVs, and most of all for me, it is a pretty good conclusion for a fantasy romance series. And comparing to like other finales of Sarah J Maas's books, Throne of Class and Akatar, this one falls to the bottom of that list for finales. And that is the end of my non-spoilery section of this book. Moving right on to my spoiler-filled thoughts, and if you have not yet read House of Flame and Shadow, this is your warning to leave this video, click off, and come back when you have finished reading the book. Okay, so this section isn't going to be as organized as the non-spoilery section, so take this bit as like a rant. It might be a little bit rambly, a lot of jump cuts. There are positives, it's not all negatives, but the positives are very spoilery driven, so that's why I decided to make my review like this. First up, I really really love the couple of Rune and Lydia. They were amazing, although I did want more time with them, with more growth on both of their ends. Well, Lydia being a descendant of Aelin, that's what I picked up from what we were given, so that really shocked me. And of course, one of my other favorite parts were the appearance of our Akatar characters with Azriel, Nesta especially, Rhysand being Rhysand. The first part of the book, those were the characters that really saved it for me as and Nesta and Bryce being together in that underground cave network together and fighting against creatures. I really loved the interactions between Bryce and as a Nesta because it showed their shock of like her modern world being like oh my gosh they have a lot of technology but they also have killing machines that if they come to our world we're all going to be dead. <laughs> but yes with Nesta I think piggybacking off of A Court of Silver Flames, Nesta as a character I really did end up liking her a lot after all of the growth that she does in her book but I think with Nesta in this one, she does show off her magical abilities more and how her relationship with Reese is still strained even after, you know, everything that happened in Silver Flames. So I was like, Reese, come on. <laughs> but I understand like why he's so, so protective at this point in his life. I'm gonna let that slide. Also like in my edition of House of Flame and Shadow, I do have the bonus content of um, Ember and Randall and I really liked Ember and Randall being in the Akatar world and how it was kind of like a little healing journey for Nesta because of her absent mother. I really enjoyed that little bonus content that we got. Okay, and then we have Bryce being a little bit too harsh towards Hunt and this is when after Hunt is rescued and then Bryce is back in her world. So those interactions, I was like, okay girl, <laughs> calm down a little bit. Your man just got brutally tortured and those torture scenes they were hard to read, but my goodness, they're bickering, which is not fun to read. And I do see how it could come to that point because there's so much going on, there's so much happening all around them. And to be level headed and always calm and be mature, like, yes, you can be, but then everyone has a certain point of like, okay. <laughs> this is not how it's going to go and they might, you know, not be their normal selves. Although as much as Bryce annoyed me in this one, I did really enjoy Bryce and her unforgiving ability of wanting to save people and saving innocence. I always like it when characters are like that, although it can come off as being a little bit sneaky or manipulative, but I really didn't like that quality about her and it really shone through. And how Bryce is very powerful. I did like those moments of how she's like badass and taking everyone down. Also, one thing about the side characters, I actually really liked Ethan's storyline and how he's navigating his werewolf pack side of himself and with Jezeba. I really did like that storyline, although sometimes it might have seemed a little bit out of place and it jumped way too much during the different POVs. I really did like Ethan's storyline, but with Therian's storyline, I was like, what is going on with Therian? I think he's in a downward spiral and it kind of gets better at the end of this book, 
but there was just that random arranged marriage with Safia and I'm like okay what's going to happen next here and since there are unresolved storylines and plot lines I do think we will have a fourth book maybe down in the future but I'm still taking House of Flame Shadow as a last book in a series and with Therian I found it hilarious that he kept running away from queens he ran away from the river queen the viper queen and the ocean queen he was just running away to join his friends although I guess a winning point for Therian is that he did step up to the plate and be like okay I'm gonna be the one to marry Safia and not to those murder twins. So another thing that really stuck out to me was the info dumps. I found it really funny at some points because like when it was Bryce and Hunt in the like semi-conscious place of hell and they're talking to the prince of hell it felt like a Q&A session. They were like okay so this means this and then the princess of hell will be like yeah and then they go on a huge monologue of like the history of things it just started to feel so info dumpy too neat of everything being wrapped up and there wasn't as many consequences as i thought there would be for our characters yes they all experienced like battling and injuries and mental Tess, but I thought there weren't enough consequences for everything that was happening on and the ending felt way too easy. Despite all of that, I was really happy that there is a happy ending and that no major character dies, but I just think that even having one major character die would up the ante for the Crescent City series because it just felt like everyone's a little bit too powerful and all our enemies die and it's only like minor characters that die and that are nuisances that are perished well despite all that i am happy that our characters are happy and i think that's what matters in the end i just felt that to get there could have been a little bit more edited down maybe even have having a fourth book would have helped wrap up the storylines a little bit better instead of it feeling a little bit too convenient for the characters and all their huge problems that they have. But yeah, for going forward with Sarah J Mast, I will still be reading her books but I'm going into her books being a little bit more critical now. I think that's a result of me making booktube videos, book reviews, but it's okay to point out the negatives and positives of books that I'm reading. Although this book n might not have been the best Sarah J Mass book that I've ever read. I still really had a fun time reading it and having like the Akatar characters pop up. That was really fan service but I loved it. <laughs> okay and that is the end of my review. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below your thoughts and be careful not to put anything too spoilery in the comments below for those that have not yet read this book. And without all that being said, thank you again for watching. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!